That is why today I have Dr. Samura Kamara, who is the, you know, um, uh, um, supposedly would be the next president in Sierra Leone because the people of Sierra Leone are fed up. They're tired. They've evaluated now the Nenga opportunity for evaluate between the APC and SLPP, and they say it's night and day. And definitely with Dr. Samuel Kumar now in this platform, you can't tell we're in policy. Because, guys, we're going to talk policy. We're going to talk about moving forward. That is the goal of this life. It's about moving forward. You know? So let me, uh, you know, try to put this video, first of all, of uh, Mr. You know, Francis Ben Kaifala, the Renaissance man, who we all know in, in story. There's this video that I'm going to share with you guys. I'm going to put it up on the screen. And we have all the, you know, the facts and the details to... You know, um, uh, break this down because again, it goes back to these guys. You know, um, just sending, you know, uh, 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 perceptions out there, creating this terrible persona for people like Dr. Samura Kamara himself. But Dr. Samura Kamara, before I even put this video on of Francis Ben Kaifala talking about the Sarah Rutile thing, which of course, like I said, this is going to be in passing. Um, just say hello to the family. And Dr. Samura, just tell me you've been the Minister of Finance, you know, a Minister, uh, Bank Governor, Minister of Foreign Affairs. Just tell me a little bit. Um, and then um, uh, we'll, we'll take it from there. Go ahead and tell, tell the family Adu for me. Family Unadu, good evening, everybody, my brothers and sisters. Thank you very much for watching this program and for following us. My name is Samura Kamara. Uh, as a nationalist, I've worked for the people of Sierra Leone, for all of you, for over 40 years in various sectors of, of, of the country, of the economy, uh, mainly in the financial sector, many years in the Central Bank of Sierra Leone, and then many years in the public service, in particular in the Ministry of Finance, as Financial Secretary, as well as uh, Minister of Finance and Economic Development. And then from there, went to the Central Bank as Governor, of the Central Bank after having spent many years there from low position of uh, economic uh, executive and then rose up to governor of the bank in 2008. And then of course, after which I also became Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation. In between, I uh, had a stint in the International Monetary Fund in the Executive Director's Office as a Alternative Executive Director for Africa, covering 22 countries. Had a bit long string at the Commonwealth Secretariat, first as Economics Officer between 1991 and 1994, and then became a Chief Economics Officer between 1997 to 2001, before I came back to Sierra Leone. So I've tried in the process to find ways of how with my contribution we can improve the life of every Sierra Leonean by developing a lot of policies and programs, interventions, both during fact, before the Civil War, during the Civil War, and after the Civil War. We have been in this period of post-conflict reconstruction since 2002. And we are still reconstructing after the war. It's not an easy thing. It's not a one-day thing. It's not a one-month thing. Like developing a nation is a continuous process and requires the engagement of everybody. We must all be involved. That's what politics is all about. You consult, you agree consensus, and then you execute together. And then you as a leader, you guide the process and provide services for the people. So in short, this is my, 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 my journey in the government, in serving the government and people of this country. I'm not hearing you. You are mute. Right. So for, for yeah. a lot of us, thank you, Doc. For a lot of us, you know, um, we have no doubt in your service, exemplary service, service over the years. You know, so um, uh, what do we can do now? We let we can expose these guys for a little bit. You know, 
Um, of course, I have Cashbox with me to help us, you know, break this whole thing about this SL mining thing. You know, we, we're not going to go deep into it, Doc, but just to, you know, allay the fears of the people, at least there, we listened to Francis Ben Kaifala. It said something about this SL mining 30%. And the reason why I would have mentioned this, you see, it's because... Sarah, 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 Sarah Ruta. Sarah Ruta. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Sarah Ruta. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. And the reason why I would have mentioned is, is because, again, these are the same guys we now, the new contract that he signed with, you know, um, somebody it's shared my link. Please, nobody, please don't share this link. I only share this link to my guests. People keep calling, calling, calling. If you're sharing this link, please stop. All right. So we would have mentioned this because the thing is, um, when you look at these guys them now, then get 10% with this new deal that, S, you know, Sarah Ruta has signed. We, of course... Um, you know what the Sierra Ruta thing we but but let's let's play this video of Francis Ben Kaifala and then I'm I'll I'll bring this I'll bring this up there. Let, let's play this video of Francis Ben Kaifala first and then we'll take it from there. Okay. The issue we get for do with sales of the um Sierra Ruta where you go inside the government white paper paragraph 18 we talk about the Sierra Ruta A they talk about secrecy and shady dealings will be happen during the sales and safe paragraph B 18B they talk about the issues them and how illegal it be happen and name certain people them where the first person uh, the first time president and is by coma it mentioned Dr. Samura Kamara and John Bono CC where on the review according to your words they say they review back some of the investigation there when they investigate all in three people there so or when they do an individually would already investigate we already investigate, we already get conclusions there. And I can tell you for a fact so how that the Sierra Rutile, the Sierra Rutile uh, deal was very shady. It was done without following proper processes. It was done without respect for the tax laws of Sierra Leone. For example, when they decide for reach the tax, the eight million dollar tax with them pay. I can tell you for a fact the Sierra Rutile be responsible for pay tax over one hundred million dollars. So how they reach the conclusion for say Sarah Rutile should pay eight million dollars was completely shady, was irresponsible, was careless. So quickly, and I I, as I can speak with you, all the authorities that were involved in that issue don't confirm that themselves. Some of them talk and say they could confirm not confirm say waiting. They confirm say yes, the the decision on the taxing was 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 done like a rule of thumb like you you can just sit down and talk say okay if you pay 150 million well the country had up right now give you eight million so, so if we don't do that then i remain arrangement now and these are the kinds of things that we have to avoid as a country so if we don't do these investigations we already get on a conclusion according to you we wait for the um recommendations from the coi and you self confirm some of the same things they were in at the um government white paper already talk about shady dealings them and some secrecy will be happen in the transaction them is it that on a conclusion on a get and the coi being kind of similar or on a being compare notes at some point no 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 we will not ever get i don't ever get contact with the judges of the coi they don't ever get contact with me definitely will not get no relationship whatsoever so why you keep we are the acc in fact even when they set up the committee for for for, for look into the white paper report I decided to say I know they get involved at all. I was totally removed from the process. So why, why we so are why, the SEC mindful? Involved? We mindful of our independence and, and we, we want to make sure say we keep that independence because we are the gatekeepers for the fight against corruption. So why, why you hold on why you hold on the report until the COI um, reports come out? If the reports been come out otherwise say you know name then three people they are so in the commission. Because now the principle of complementarity. So if the commission the reports will come out, then three people they are the name not the inside the reports, you for be go ahead and publish. Oh yes, I they come out and say there is an aspect we will not look into look up. I am telling you, in fact the CO I not even deal with the tax aspect of the of the of the of the of the of the Sarah Ruta deal. Now we deal with her. No so you see how we complement yourself. They left out the tax aspect, they looked at more whether the shares were properly valued, whether they were carefully valued, whether the right rates were paid and all these things. We zoomed in on the tax aspect which they were blindsided on. And we are now coming in to say, hey, here is another aspect of this investigation. And I can tell you for fact, everybody were involved in that decision making. Don't sit down with we and admit the to the fact say the tax was irresponsibly uh, decided. The SEC now. Okay, so... Uh Dr. Samara, what is, what is Francis Ben Kaifala talking about? 
you know, my brother, this is the first time I'm here in this interview. And uh, the fella is a young man. I don't know how enthusiastic he is to make a name for himself. But if you deserve the public, your watchword is sincerity, honesty. You must be ready to call the spirit a spirit and speak the truth. Um, I just want for intervene and correct one or two things. As far as me concerned, the issue about routine has never had anything about tax payment. As far as me concerned, the own knowledge of what you go to the COI and what you put on the white paper, you don't get nothing for do with taxation. It had to do with the alleged sale of 30% of government equity in Sierra Ruta. And during the process, during the COI, it was clearly proved that there was no such sale. There was no equity holding by government to the tune of 30%. So we don't know who said this tax business come out and certainly I don't know who are the stakeholders where say they all don't admit that Ruta has not pay tax. If, if on the other hand, there are any tax issues between the government of Sierra Leone and Ruta, certainly you know involves Samura Kamara. That I can tell you, and certainly you know go involve the president and his by Kuruma. It would have to be a corporate problem within Ruta and between Rutai and the government on Rutai's own corporate operations. Say Rutai don't perform over the years, they never will pay them corporate tax, they don't audit them, they don't present the financial statements properly audited and they failed to pay tax on their operations. But the issue as far as me concerned, it gets for do with this alleged 30% shareholding and government. I don't try for explainer. Now the CEO, it came out very, very clearly. There was no 30%. Yes, again, let me try for clear the air. I don't try for clear that many, many times. When SLPP government came under Pakaba, Rutile was going down because of the war impact. Rutile, the one forget grab up again and we were at a point where Solomon Berra was then vice president we we're looking for a flagship international project where Sierra Leone will rely on to give the message to the international world that Sierra Leone despite the war is now ready to come back into the global economic activity area so therefore we're looking for one good international company investment in Sierra Leone. Because once you get around it, then it will send the message to other countries like Sierra Leone was then a safe country where any investor can come and do the investment. That's how when Rutile came to the government, they asked for so many waivers, incentives. One of them was, they said, we owe government a five million worth of dollars of PAYE unpaid. And PAYE now pay as you earn interest. Because they said during the war period, they are not performing, but they kept accumulating PAYE to government. So they asked for a waiver. Then, then the, uh, the vice president say, what do you advise in the Minister of Finance? I was in financial secretary. My advice was that as an incentive, you can provide them time relief, not to forgo the obligation, because it's a line of credit to us as a government. I say with the hope say Ruta will pick up someday tomorrow. So we don't want to forgo this money. What we can do is give them time relief. And time relief, one of the instruments where they use in debt management. Mm -hmm. So we gave them to us, okay, can you defer this payment of PAY, but you must remain current mm -hmm. with all due PAY obligations. Mm -hmm. Rutile agreed. So, okay, 
This is good for us. We cannot pay these arrears. But we will try to follow the law remain current with the with the staff, you understand the obligations, with the due. Mm -hmm. During the discussions, now the finance come back to say, ah, but what if tomorrow Rutile comes and declares itself bankrupt? They will deny. So finance came back and advised the vice president, can we find a way in which we can lock in this five million dollars worth of unpaid PAYE in equity. Hmm. You understand? Right. So that's how we locked in and we got at that material time, we got between eight and ten percent <clears throat> of shares in this. Okay. In the root time. Okay. But then it was not in the principal company, Sierra Rutile, it was a subsidiary company. Mm -hmm. A little limited. Absolutely. You understand? Right. So Rutile agreed. So we locked in. By 2012, the budget began get problems. We were looking for financing. Then it occurred to me, I said, ah, we had some money locked in in Rutile. Can we not call on this? On administrative procedure anyway. Right. So we just wrote a letter, uh, wrote a memorandum to the president, and the president, bring the facts to him, he gave us executive approval to call on his debt. By the time we negotiated with Rutile, based on the formula that was agreed under uh, 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 um, Sir Mon stewardship as vice president, mm. would be in finance. It rose, when we calculate, I go from five million to $12 million. Mm. You don't understand? Right. So we call on the $12 million. And Rutile paid the twelve million dollars there and then, mm -hmm. and these funds were paid direct to the Australian government account at the central bank. That's why during the during the uh, uh, the commission of inquiry, even the transfer documents, the SWIFT was shown as evidence. Right. And the bank was then confirmed receiving those funds. <clears throat> so now, if anybody tells me say. It was a shady deal. I find it very surprising. But all of this, my brother, it came from the GGT report. Right. And I make, if they ask me about how do we move forward as a country, you must make one big, 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 big step in life. And even as a nation, do not mismanage the transition. Do not mismanage the interface between your past government and your own government. Right. If you manage that interface. Go ahead, Doc. I think we lost him there. No, oh, okay, the network, I guess. Yeah. Um, Abraham, just while you're doing that, you know the first link I sent you, exactly what he's explaining now, the, the area I shaded green, that's okay. exactly what talking about the 30 percent there okay because let me um yes. let me go to that guys bear with yes. us of course again africa network yes sir blackout okay all right <laughs> okay thank you thank you okay. oh, we, 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 yeah join me now we we ready salon people you know, this is the things we're talking about. Now, blackout goes on. Blackout. Uh.